those of us, the high emitting, principally the high emitting people on the planet, if we have not radically reduced our emissions, we will have effectively locked the future into a high, into a high carbon future, and we would have locked the poor people in, around the planet, our own children, and most of the other species into a future that will be um, somewhere between you know, detrimental, disastrous, it's hard to know exactly how that will play out, but it's not a future that you would want to bequeath to your own children. Wow, that's tough talk. It almost sounds like he's predicting a Mad Max style apocalypse. That's the deputy boss of the Tyndall Center, whose mission is a radical deindustrialization. Well, our friend Mark Morano has actually met that degrowth freak and interviewed him. Let me bring in Mark Morano right now. Mark, what was it like meeting a guy who truly thinks that the apocalyptic end times, Mad Max style, are just a few years away. Well, the interesting thing is, Ezra, I met him at the conclusion of my UN press conference in Warsaw, which was hostily received. We were told by the crowd, how do we sleep at night? We were full of BS, bleep, bleep. Uh, Kevin Anderson actually was one of the hecklers in the audience as it ended. And we were ending our conference. He was shouting out at us, and he ended up following us out into the hall after the press conference. And that's where we actually had cameras rolling and audio recorders rolling. That's where he proceeded to shout at us and yell and scream. The idea is what you just played, a little snippet of it, that this is a moral question for him about the, uh, the future of the planet for future generations of kids. Uh, he believes very soundly in the apocalyptic science of man-made global warming. And this is a man who has personally announced that he has cut back on showering in order to fight global warming. And I asked him about this. I asked him about it, and he said, that's, because, that's why I smell. Uh, and I think he was half joking, but probably half serious. Yeah, well, here's, I mean, he boasts about, this is what he uh, said uh, last year. He said, I've cut back on washing and showering but only to levels that were the norm just a few years back. What, like, like in 2008 or, or like the year 1008 or something? So a guy who, <laughs> uh, and, and you told me just before we came on air that he, he doesn't have a fridge and he, what other weird things does he do? Well, he's trying to, and, and you gotta give him a little credit here. Unlike the Leonardo DiCaprio's, the Al Gore's, the David Suzuki, who's so we all live lavish lifestyles, well, they preach uh, you know, uh, uh, deprivation for the masses. You know, Al Gore and Leonardo DiCaprio say take public transit flashes on the screen as they come out at the Academy Awards. You know, when was the last time they were on a city bus? To Kevin Anderson's twisted credit, let's call it, give him twisted credit, he believes that the leaders of this movement, and he's one of the leaders in the UK of the global warming professor, he believes they should take an example. So he's actually cut back on his showering. He got rid of his refrigerator. So if he's he got rid of his fridge, live. how does he, where does he put his food like i mean showering that's a hygiene issue a fridge is about a food preparation and food safety issue it sounds like he's moving not just back in time industrially but when you move back in time industrially and back in time in terms of quality of life and quantity and like we have showers not just so that we smell good the smell is a proxy for health we we put food in the yes. fridge not just because it tastes better but not rotting food is a proxy for health he wants us to live like third world subsistence people live who can't afford hot water or fridges, will they die young? Yeah, and that's what that's his premise isn't so much that we all have to live in huts made of dung, but he wants us all to lower our standard of living and lower our wealth the, so that we can be closer. And maybe, and ultimately, this is a, a green socialist utopian vision where the poorest of the poor get lifted up just enough so they're not as poor and the wealthy are brought down. Everyone's sort of brought to this little middle. That's ultimately what's going on here. His call for degrowth strategies, planned recessions, uh, this is ultimately, if you start looking back at what's happening here, this is what the Obama administration is really all about, except they don't announce it. They don't call it that. But when you try to restrict energy access and you manage and plan an economy on every aspect, you suddenly have the power to, to have planned recessions. And that's why they want UN treaties that are part of what they call, quote, global governance, unquote. And so Kevin Anderson's plan here 
is that the world's, the wealthy nations of the world, the developed world, will get together and plan recessions to start lowering our emissions, something in a range of eight to ten percent per year, in order to save us from catastrophic eight to ten percent. A one percent or two percent recession is considered yes. painful. I don't think there's been a ten percent recession since the Great Depression. But let me take a minute here, because we've been talking about this guy and laughing about him, and you said you met, met him at a climate conference a few months ago, but I don't think we've properly introduced him and his Tyndall Center. Tell me sure. how important this guy is, how important his institution is, how much tax dollars he gets, because he's not just some crazy crackpot hobo on the street who hasn't showered. He is a public policy leader, a professor, a recipient of government funds, and a lobbyist with a lot of sway. Yes, and we're here laughing about him. He looked a little bit like a homeless person when I saw him. He just looked, he looked unkempt, and uh, I won't get into body odor, but he just didn't look, he just, you would think this was a, a man who is uh, you know, not a distinguished professor when you met him in person. He's overly thin and frail almost, uh, so maybe that refrigerator, he really should think about getting one back. But he is at the top of the UK, the UK Tyndale Center. For, it was named after a 19th century physicist who did some of the early work on on the, the spectrum of, of, if you will, of the atmosphere and, uh, and uh, air studies, uh, uh, a scientist named Tyndall. What they see themselves as is the modern successor to this and that they're, they're now focusing on global warming. Well, they got significant government funds, at least until 2010, from the UK government. And now, interestingly enough, they're one of their chief sponsors is the University of East Anglia, which yeah. may be familiar to you and yeah, your listeners, because that's, cl that's Climate Gate University, yeah, the geez. center of the Climate Gate scandal. Mark, and I want to pick worse. up. The I, we, I'm afraid well, we're out of time today, my friend, but boy, we've okay. struck a, a vein of gold here. Let's talk about this again. You met some amazing characters in Warsaw. We'll talk about it another day, but thanks for giving us a teaser today. Sure, Ezra. Right on.